Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made and every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business, and he is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, and he is so worthy. Yes, he is, my sisters and brothers. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day for every last one to so always, always stay connected to Jesus. For us continue to pour our heart out to him. Just to talk to him. It don't have to be a long conversation. Just to step by and say, Jesus, here I am. I want you to know, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, thank you. That's what it means, continue to always have that personal relationship with Jesus. Because that's the end of the day. That's all he wants from us. It's a relationship. If you can make time to be in a relationship with everybody that, that will fail you, let you down, why can you not have a relationship with Jesus who won't let you down, who won't fail you, who won't give up on you, who will never leave you nor forsake, who will help you all the way to the very end, who got your back? Jesus is a friend that stays close to you each and every day. You can always count, you can always depend, and you can always rely on Jesus. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters. That praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he sure do love every last one of us, my brothers and sisters. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or to your life or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. Please return back to your first love. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you guide us and directing us. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, because today is the day that you have made, and we're so glad to be a part of it. And always rejoice in it. We just thank you, Father God, for how awesome, how amazing, how wonderful you are, God. We just thank you, Father God, for you for you being kind, for you being loving to your children today, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you have for us, God. We thank you, Father God, for your patience. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now today, Father God, that's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, give you all the thanks, giving you all the praise, giving you all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and should not return by board today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, allow your love to move through this place, allow your presence to move through this place, allow your angels to join us in praise and worship in this place. Heavenly Father God, this is your time, this is your moment. I know for a fact that you about to show up. I know for a fact that you're about to show out. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I believe and I declare, I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Jesus, and the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now today. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter into the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my, in my, my, bro, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's homes, right here in my my sister's life, Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today to move supernaturally in my brother and sister's life right now today. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to speak to them right now today, soften their heart right now, open their eyes so they can see whatever it is they need to see from you, open their ears so they can hear whatever they need to hear from you, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor for my brother and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for a fresh new anointing on them right now today, Father God. Continue to fill that cup for 
Continue to fill that cup up, Father God, that he continue to overflow right now today, Father God. Send him an angel right now today, Father God, to speak to him right now today. Lift their spirits up right now today. Let them know, Father God, that everything's okay. Let them know everything worked out. They ain't got to worry no more. They ain't have to stress no more. And, Father God, I believe not because that it's done right now today. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in this sanctuary, right here on this YouTube channel, right on this platform. Right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are comforter. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grieving you right now today. Heavenly Father God, ask we repent of our sins today, Father God. Please forgive us for our sin today, known and unknown right now. Watch us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am to always pray praise and have fellowship with all my brothers and sisters today in one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for praise, I'm available for service, but most of all, Jesus, I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and fruit of my lips about you. And I just got a tea I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more and I want more and I want more of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Amen, amen. I don't know who this word for today. I don't know who this misses for today. But I can tell you and rest assured that my brother, my sister, you have a hate out there that's been hating on you for quite some time. They can't stand your guts. And I ain't talking about somebody that's hating you because of what you got. They hate me because of that anointing that's on your life. He is hating on you because of the favor that God has on you. He is hating you because of the blessing that God, God has on you. He is hating you because God has called you, God has chosen you, and God has considered you. But most of all, why he hating on you so bad? Because your name continues to be mentioned in heaven. Every time he hears your name, it drives him crazy. Every time your name is mentioned, he goes stir crazy. Every time your name gets mentioned, he loses his mind. And when he loses his mind, what he do, he go gather up other agents and minions to hit on you. So if you, are, if you are going through something in this season, how all of a sudden a person is start hating on you for no reason, a person is this disconnected from you for no reason, start ghosting you for no reason, just this flip the strip out of no way, that because the enemy is using them as an agent and as a man to hit on you too. That's all what it is. So don't take it personal, my brothers. Don't take it personal, my sisters. That is being used by the enemy to hit on you even more. It's because he has really peeped in your future and he has seen what Jesus is about to bring you into. See, we remember at one point in time, everything was Satan's. He was on top. Everything was his. But when he was so jealous of God, he wanted to be God. When God kicked him out, then he started being jealous of some of you, my brothers and sisters, because God has favored you. And now he already know what God is about to do in your life. He already know what God is about to bring into your life. And he already know what God is up to for your life. So when he knows that, he sees that, he understands that, you best believe he's going to hate on you. Yes, he got some kind of vendetta against you. He can't stand your spirit at all. Your spirit bothers him. Your spirit bothers his agents. Your spirit bothers his men, his, his minions. But you got to continue to say no matter what. It don't matter who walk out of my life. It doesn't matter who hate on me. As long as I have Jesus, I have everything. And you do. And that's what this subject is about right now today. You have some haters. Again, a person that's hating on you, they hate you because of what you got. They hate on you what's on you. And it's not them. 
That's why they hating you so bad. They hate because your name is being mentioned. They hate because how people look up to you. They hate you because your your light is shines like a like a shining star. They hate on you how people always look up to you. People want to be around you. That's why they hate on you. But it's not then they're being control minded by the enemy because he's your number one hater. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna tell you how I know. Let's turn our Bible to Job chapter one. Then we're gonna finish up by Job two. Job one verse six. If you have it, let the church say amen. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. Now, do you see how Satan also came with the angels? Why did Satan come with the angels? First of all, to be, to be nosy. Second of all, he knew he heard your name. Third of all, he wanted to know what the angels were going back to, to present to God. See, every time when, you're, when the angels are going to God, talking about you, bragging about you, oh, my God, he get really upset. He get in his feelings. He get real emotional. And every time the angels is going back and, and, and bringing a good report to God about you, he can't stand it. They hate. He hates that. He hates when somebody's talking good about you, but ain't nobody talking good about him. He can't stand because your name is being mentioned and his name not being mentioned. He can't stand because he know that God is about to show up and show in your life and God ain't doing anything in his life. He can't stand that he was being signified. He had too much time in his hand just to go see what the angels are about. He said, let me go see what they're talking about. He seen how the angel was grouped up in a huddle and your name just kept being mentioned up there in heaven. Your name kept being mentioned up there in the spiritual realm. He said, oh my God. They talking about him like that. They talking about her like that. And right then and there, he was already fired five hot with you. He was 1,000 degrees mad at you because of what you were doing. Ain't like you said you want to fight him. Ain't said that you want to you want to you want to get some a group of people you want to jump on them. He was mad because your name was being mentioned up there in heaven, and the angel was going to God, talking good about you. And he can't stand with somebody talking good about somebody else. Anybody talking about him because why? He's a jealous person. Anytime somebody's hating you, that means they got some jealousy and envy and malice in their spirit and their heart. And we all deal with people right now today that have they are jealous of you, they are envy of you, and they have malice in their heart because why? It's because they are hating on you. They ain't hating on you because what you got. They hating on you what just on you. And they can't stand that. So what he'll do, he'll use his other his other agents and means to go against you. And what he'll do, he'll tell God, God, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go against you. I'm going to do some. I'm going to do something painful and harmful to your son and your daughters. And I promise you, they won't be praising you like that. I promise you, they won't be glorifying you like that. And God said, really? Give me your best shot. See, the enemy can't do nothing to you unless you get permission from God. Right now, what you are going through right now is called God has given the enemy the permission to do what he need to do to you. But God already know how it's going to work out, and God already know how it's going to end at the end. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Amen. So, let's go to verse 7. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from Roman, through the earth and going back and forth in it. See, he was going back and forth. He was already hearing your name in the spiritual realm. He just can't do nothing to you unless he got the green light from God. He can't do nothing to you unless he get the green light from God. So right now, he was already pulling his hair out, thinking about how he can do, how he can get you, how he can deceive you, how he can play you. He already had his, his crew and posse lined up, but his crew and his posse still can't do nothing to you unless it got the green light from God. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. This one, God took a shot on you, my sisters. Hallelujah. This one, God took a shot on you, my brothers. When the Lord said, have you considered? That means God, God has already had full faith and full confidence in you. And when God take a shot on you, there's no way that you can miss. There's no way that you can lose. When God took a shot on you, my brothers and sisters. I want y'all to listen to me good and listen to me carefully. When God took a shot on you. He already knew how it was going to work out. God has already had full faith and full confidence in you, my brothers and sisters. You can't lose at all because God is the type of God he can't lose. He's always a winner. 
Even though they hating you so bad, you still going to become a winner. And this is what he's going to do. He's going to try to play mind games. He's going to try to try to throw all kind of situation at you just to see you're going to break down. And right now, we're going through something this season. Right now, we're going through a little bit of pain. We're going through a little suffering. But no matter what you're going through, God still took a shot on you. When God took that shot on you, he said, my son can't miss. My daughter can't miss. But God, what the enemy is trying to do to my son and my daughter, they are not going to turn their back against me. They're still going to thank me. They're still going to praise me. They're still going to glorify me. How I know, I'm glad that you asked me this. Let's go to Job 2. Let's go to verse 4. And we're going to read the verse 10. Job chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 4 and 10. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. It doesn't matter what the enemy try to do to us in this season, my brothers and sisters. He tried every kind of scheme, every kind of tactic he can come up with, and we still did not turn our back against God. And when he realized that we didn't turn our back against God, when he realized that we didn't curse God out, when he realized that we were still seeking him and praising him and glorifying him, the next strategy he got to do, he got to have somebody close to us to go against us. And what he does and what he will do, he will use the person that's close to us who we know, who we think, who will always have our back. But he said, if I use this person right, I guarantee you, they're going to roll this person. But Satan had no idea. It, is, it doesn't matter who we try to bring against us. We still is going to choose Jesus all day long. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Let's go to verse 9. His wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Do you see how Satan used his own agent and meaning to go against God's people? Do you see how Satan used the person that was close to you to go against God? But Job said, woman, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And all of this, Job did not sin in what he had said. Right then and now, that made the devil even more mad at you. He was more furious at you because it doesn't matter what he tried to do. We did not break our bond. We did not break our commitment. We did not break our relationship with Jesus. Because it doesn't matter who Satan tried to bring against us, we always going to choose Jesus at all given time. And that's why Jesus, oh, help me this thing, Father God. That's why Jesus took a shot on you because he already knew that you were not going to turn your back against him. So when the Lord took a shot on you, he said, you will come a winner. You already won. You already overcame every obstacle, every pain, suffering, everything that you were going through. Jesus, you already overcame it. You already won. That's why you have a hater the way that you people are hating on you right now today. It's because you still choose God over everything. And when you choose God over everything, some people can't stand it because everybody cannot go through what you're going through. And Jesus did not take a shot on everybody because Jesus did not have full faith and Jesus did not have full confidence. And he did not consider everybody because, you know, everybody ain't big enough and strong enough to go through what you are going through, what you are facing. Most people would have did that. They would have said, you know what, Jesus, I'm rocking with my friend. I'm rocking with my mom and dad. I'm rocking with my boyfriend, my girlfriend. I'm rocking with my husband and wife. They're going to leave me. But you see, you know what? There you go. They go to the front door. You can leave. I'm still trusting Jesus. Joel said, woman, you talking crazy. I don't care if I'm married to you or not. I don't care if I had kids with you or not. I'm still going to choose Jesus over you. But do you see how the enemy used the one that's close to you? That's what he do. The point I'm making, after you did all that and God took that shot on you, and he said that you can't miss because you can't miss and you're on fire for the Lord, get ready to receive your double portion. Your double portion is just around the corner, my brothers and sisters. I don't know who this word for today. I don't know who God is talking to today. But he said you have passed every test, my brothers. You have passed every test, my sister, that came against you. And Jesus said now it's time for you to be rewarded for going through what you're going through. 
This is the day that God is about to show up and he's about to show up in your life. Get ready to receive your double portion. Your double portion is a phone call away, an email away, a text message away, and a knock on the way. And if you know that God is talking to you and it's worth it for you, say thank you, Jesus. I know that you are talking to me. I receive it. I claim it right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And if you like what you heard today, go ahead, Jesus, like button. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button to as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, but I was praying that simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my, my, keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.